What's your opinion of Milo Yiannopoulos and the alt-right? All right, well, I, I can't say that I followed what Milo has said and written very closely. I've watched a few interviews with him, and I, I know about his lifetime ban from Twitter. Obviously, I agree with him about a few things, and I disagree with him about others. The points of disagreement are probably unsurprising. He's a huge Trump supporter. He's religious and given to defending a belief in God in terms that are no more impressive than ones you've heard a thousand times before. And I find in someone who is obviously smart and very articulate, these arguments are even more annoying. So our minds don't quite meet there. My basic gripe with Milo, and again, this is based only on a few interviews and, and a couple of his articles, is that he strikes me as fairly insincere. I mean, he appears to be trolling all of humanity at this point and having a lot of fun doing it. And half of what he says about social justice warriors and political correctness and Islamophobia is very incisive and amusing. But he seems to approach everything as a performance, and this leaves me wondering what he actually believes. So I don't see him as a natural ally for what I'm doing. But I do think he's gotten screwed by the media. I mean, his ban from Twitter is ridiculous, given that Twitter doesn't ban jihadists with any reliability. There's definitely a liberal media bias that is cutting against people like Milo, which he and his fans are appropriately outraged about. And as for the alt-right, for which Milo is the poster boy, I'm not sure I can say anything about it that is fair or useful. It seems to contain some smart people who are outraged by outrageous things, as Milo seems to be, at least some of the time. And it contains real racist nitwits and everything in between. It's a bit like the Black Lives Matter movement in that respect, which is to say a totally mixed bag. And the net result of which is divisive, in my view. As far as I can tell, becoming a part of a movement doesn't help anybody think clearly. So I distrust identity politics of all kinds. I think we should talk about specific issues, whether it's trade or guns or immigration or foreign interventions or abortion or anything else. And we should reason honestly about them. And I'm not the first person to notice that it's pretty strange that knowing a person's position on any one of these issues generally allows you to predict his position on the others. This shouldn't happen. Some of these issues are totally unrelated. Why should a person's attitude toward guns be predictive of his views on climate change or immigration or abortion? And yet, it almost certainly is in our society. That's a sign that people are joining tribes and movements, right? It's not the sign of clear thinking. If you're reasoning honestly about facts, then the color of your skin is irrelevant. The religion of your parents is irrelevant. Whether you're gay or straight is irrelevant. Your identity is irrelevant. In fact, if you're talking about reality, its character can't be predicated on who you happen to be. Right? That's what it means to be talking about reality. And this also applies to the reality of human experience and human suffering. For instance, if vaccines don't cause autism, if that is just a fact, and that's what the best science suggests at this point, well then, when arguing against this view, you need data or a new analysis of existing data. You need an argument. Okay? And the nature of any argument is that its validity doesn't depend on who you are. That's why a good argument should be accepted by others, right? No matter who they are. So in the case of vaccines causing autism, you don't get to say, as a parent of a child with autism, I believe X, Y, and Z. Whatever is true about the biological basis of autism can't depend on who you are. And who you are in this case is probably adding a level of emotional engagement with the issue, which would be totally understandable but would also be unlikely to lead you to think about it more clearly. The facts are whatever they are, and it's not an accident 
that being disinterested, not uninterested, but disinterested, that is not being emotionally engaged, usually improves a person's ability to reason about the facts. When talking about violence in our society, again, the facts are whatever they are. How many people got shot? How many died? What was the color of their skin? Who shot them? What was the color of their skin? Getting a handle on these facts doesn't require one to say, as a black man, I know X, Y, and Z. The color of your skin simply isn't relevant information. When talking about the data, that is what is happening throughout a whole society, your life experience isn't relevant information. And the fact that you think it might be is a problem. And as you'll hear in a minute, it's a problem I recently ran into on another podcast. Now, this isn't to say that a person's life experience is never relevant to a conversation. Of course it is. And it can be used to establish certain kinds of facts. I mean, if someone says to you, Catholics don't believe in hell, it's perfectly valid to retort, actually, my mom is a Catholic and she believes in hell. Of course, there's a larger question of what the Catholic doctrine actually is. But if a person is making a statement about a certain group of people, and you are a member of the group, you might very well be in a position to falsify his claim on the basis of your experience. But a person's identity and life experience often aren't relevant when talking about facts. And they're usually invoked in ways that are clearly fallacious. And many people seem to be making a political religion out of ignoring this difference. So I urge you not to be one of those people. Whether you're on the left or on the right, 